Tanya here. Happy Wednesday. I have a couple people here, I think. Um, I don't see any names, so probably maybe online. Um, so in case you don't know who I am, my name is Tanya Clark. I'm the owner operator of The Dancing Soul, which is my business. And I am a MELT method practitioner. And if you're not quite sure what MELT is, it's a really awesome self-treatment technique based, it's a hands-off body work treatment technique. And um, it's based off of light touch manual therapy. So it helps people to get out of and stay out of chronic pain, which is really, a, a really quite a special thing to work with people, you know, because pain can really limit your life and your choices and what you do and the things that you used to be able to do. And um, so it's a really nice thing thing to work with people and to empower them that there are choices that they can make little small things that they can do every day um, to just change the way that their body feels to change the efficiency of their nervous system how well your body is actually resting um, I think sometimes we don't necessarily pay attention to how we rest um, I think in our society sometimes we're more focused on how much we can go and how much we can push and what we can do and forcing things and and so today was just kind of a little inspiration the scope today um, because my inspiration for my post yesterday because I do daily Instagram posts Facebook and and share it on Twitter and everything and my blog um, for what I'm doing that helps me with my self-care, things that inspire me. And yesterday, um, it was pretty funny because the night before I was in dance class, love, love, love dance. And, you know, after having my my ankle injury and, and being out for really four months and just kind of slowly getting back into it, like every time I go back, I'm like, oh, I, I just really love this space. I love the women that I get to dance with. And it's just such a special place for me. The studio is really a special place for me. Um, and so that's always really been my yang activity. So, you, you know, yin and yang, and, and, and that's always my really intense, that's where I really push myself and let it all go. Um, and then all of my other work, with you know Pilates and my yoga and, and, and different things like that, my self-care is really to help my body recover from dance. Um, I mean, I just trying to call me. <laughs> I totally, and I, I remember somebody saying that to like make sure that you turn your notifications off. Um, so I apologize for that. Um, where was I? See, that's why we want to make sure we do that live broad, broadcasting, right? Totally fun sometimes. Um, one day I'm going to have a roll of bloopers because I practice and, and, and I'm, I'm putting, my goal is to put videos out there, Pilates classes, yoga classes, movement classes. And, and as I'm working on that, um, I mean, I have some pretty crazy bloopers. So I'm going to one day have that up for sure. Um, but so my self-care has always always been more for purposes of restoring my body for dance because I'm I'm 40 I just turned 40 I mean listen it's just a fact of nature that we don't I mean my body you know doesn't I, I notice things that I didn't notice in my 20s right I mean I had a lot of pain in my 20s I definitely think that I am in much better condition now as far as the way that I care for my body. I mean, because when I was in my 20s, I was pushing it. I was doing step aerobics classes and dance classes. And, you know, my Pilates classes were like kick ass at that time as far as kick your ass, right? Like, I mean, I was very always very strict with form and everything, but definitely like, you know, it was definitely not the way that I teach now um, because I realized the importance of recovery and repair and just restoring our nervous system instead of just pushing it all the time. Um, and so, you know, being at 40 and, you know, I dance with, you know, people who are younger and, you know, and can do more things and stuff like that. And so I really have to care for my body because it's something that I want to continue doing for a really long time. Like I want to be able to say when I'm 90, I'm still dancing. And I do think that that's possible because, you know, I remember being at a ballroom competition once. Um, I did competitive ballroom dancing for about four years and, um, there was a woman, it was her 90th birthday and she was out there dancing the quick step and so that was such a huge inspiration for me and I just think that um, so often we limit ourselves by our own beliefs or because we just simply believe ourselves about our recovery and our restoring so that was what inspired I don't want to like ramble too much 
but my post yesterday, um, before I posted my Instagram, my daily Instagram post, I was doing a Pilates video. And so it's always been a goal of mine on the Dancing Soul to have live classes, like our, our um, streaming classes, you know, so you can have recorded Pilates classes, recorded, because some of the ladies that used to always take my Pilates classes when I was teaching at a corporate wellness center in the area, had asked me many times, you know, I, I wish I could have a recording of this, I could do it at home. And so it was always something that was on the back burner. And now that I'm actually finally getting serious about doing videos, it's something that I've been working on. So I'm working on it um, behind the scenes and, and I'm gonna, like I said, I promise, I'm gonna show you some bloopers one day because it's pretty funny. So yesterday, I am exhausted from dance the night before because it's the first, you know, I hadn't been there in a couple of weeks and so really great work in the dance studio the night before and so I was pretty exhausted yesterday. But I was determined, like, I have to get some of these Pilates videos, right? I have to get some of these things out. I have to start figuring out angling and lighting and different things like that. And what is it that I want to actually show you? And um, so 15 minutes into my little Pilates video, I mean, I am just exhausted trying to work my core. And my body was literally like, what the F are you doing? Stop it. And so literally, I just kind of like that was a big blooper right there. That video is going nowhere because I literally just kind of like fell out on the floor like I can't even like do another core work or anything like that. Like my body was way too exhausted. And so I just wanted to do melt. I just wanted to melt. I just wanted to let my body relax and I wanted to help my body just have a little bit of sense of release and support. Um, and so that's what inspired my post. My whole post yesterday was just about, you know, how often we try to push and pull and force and do things to try to change. And, and sometimes it's just a matter of stepping back and it's a matter of checking in with our body, letting our body know that we're there for it. Um, and so I think that that is, is really important as well as how much we push ourselves. So that was just kind of the little bit of inspiration to come on here and do a little scope, not only to just keep myself um, accountable, you know, for trying to do a scope every day, just to keep my myself, to keep putting myself out there because I'm the face of my business, the dancing soul. I don't want anybody speaking, you know, for what my business could do, for why you would want to work with me. I want to have my own voice out there. Um, and so that's just kind of where I come from now when I work with my clients and stuff is a matter of you know, where are they at and what is it that they need and where does that balance need to happen? Um, and so that's just kind of the little bit of wisdom today is that sometimes we just need to take care of ourselves a little bit more than we push ourselves. Um, and so that's really just it is kind of asking yourself, like, where is it that maybe you could pull back and relax a little bit today? Um, instead of thinking that you have to do more or that you have to push yourself a little bit more, there's more to do or all your things on your to-do list. And, you know, cause I know for myself, I get down on myself sometimes. Like I didn't scope for a while because I felt like, oh, what do I even have to say? You know, who am I to say anything? And, and these are like belief patterns that we have to let go. And that kind of ties into just something I wanted to talk about with the root chakra, Muladhara, um, is how, you know, to know when you're losing energy in that area, in that chakra, which could affect many organs and, and, and other chakras because it's just, you know, our, our energy databases. Um, and so with the root chakra and, you know, I, I had mentioned before I'm doing an online um, course with Caroline Mason and Norm Sheely, which is um, the science of medical intuition. And if you don't know of Caroline Mace, I highly recommend it's M-Y-S-S. Go find her, look her up, Anatomy of the Spirit, Sacred Contracts, Defy Gravity, like, you know, just kind of look through her stuff. And if anything appeals to you, but she's helped me understand the most about, in a practical way, how we're losing energy or how we're investing our energy um, in our life. And so with the root chakra, you know, our base chakra, that's our tribal chakra. Um, that is our tribal center of belief patterns and superstitions and different things like that. And, and, you know, and so those are formed when we're really, really young and they're usually formed by the people who are around us the most, our caregivers, because right, we're like little 
sponges when we are, you know, when we're that young, when we're, we're just soaking everything up. And, and so, you know, one of the belief patterns was that, what do I have to say? Who am I to say anything? You know, like maybe I should just be quiet, you know, and, and, and I had to let that go. I, I, I recognize like I'm losing power here. Like I'm investing in a belief that is not giving me a return, right? It's like investing in something and are you creating a return for yourself or are you creating debt for yourself? Because if you're creating debt for, if we're creating debt for ourselves, then we have to borrow from somewhere, right? And where are we going to borrow that energy from? We're either going to borrow it from somebody else where we're going to kind of suck their energy from them or we're going to suck it from our own cell tissues. And so I know for myself, I don't want to do that anymore, you know, and, and, and we're all learning in different ways with that. And so um, that was a belief for myself that I had to just kind of say, okay, this is not giving me a return on my investment. And I know that I'm passionate about what I do. I love learning. I love my teachers. Um, and, you know, and that's what I want to do is share. And, you know, even if we just make one difference with one person in our day, then that's a huge thing. Um, and, you know, and as soon as I let go of that and I got back on and started scoping and I, I have two new private clients this week that, you know, were super, you know, cautious about, oh, I don't know if I want to try this because a lot of people have said, you know, like if I try Pilates, my back will hurt or, you know, and then another, you know, person that is just really, you know, wasn't sure because he's doing chiropractic care, he's doing all these other things, but it was just a matter of kind of putting out there what's important to us and what our goals are and is a goal to feel better and to know when we're actually investing in things that are giving us returns on our energy which are making us feel good right like that's a really great way to know is something making you feel good or is it draining energy from you right go with the things that are making us feel good so just kind of leaving you with one you know a couple questions today is in where in your life can you pull back a little bit and maybe be a little bit more gentle on yourself and maybe come from more of a caring space, um, a more global space with it? Um, and then the second question would be, what are any belief patterns are, that you could be investing in that are causing you to lose energy in your root chakra, your tribal system? The sacred truth there is all is one. What is in the whole, what is in one is in the whole, right? We're all in it together. I think that um, just kind of noticing those things that maybe you're holding on to that you finance every day that maybe aren't bringing you any returns, right? And it could be something simple. It could be something major, like, you know, a different, you know, culture or religion or something that, you know, you were you were taught to feel that, you know, or think something different of. Um, and so that would just be what I would leave you with today. So, um, and I, I just wanted to really quickly here, um, do show you on my website. So the dancing soul, you can find me the dancing soul, S O U L dot com. And, um, I kind of put everything that I do on there. I'm, I, I, I share every day, but Instagram and, and Facebook are the dancing soul. And then, um, and then, um, Twitter and Periscope is Dancing Soul Blog. So um, I had talked a couple of weeks ago about um, the salt lamps, the Himalayan salt lamps. And the reason that they're so good for us is because they release negative ions. And so negative ions create positive moods. It's a really easy way to remember it. All of our electronic devices and so forth. Sorry that I keep looking away here, guys, but like I'm uh, trying to get my, um, my, uh, my big screen on my TV. I have my laptop connected to my TV. Uh, my life is on the floor these days because I don't have a couch. I got rid of my furniture. Um, and so... So here, I'm um, just trying to pull it up, and for some reason, the whole system isn't pulling up. So I always have technical issues when I'm trying to do something. Um, and so uh, at any rate, like my whole entire computer isn't even responding now. So forget about that live television or live broadcasting, right? You never know what's going to happen. So I was going to show you my website, um, but 
you can go to the dancing soul s o u l dot com and the reason I was bringing that up is because I had mentioned the Himalayan salt lamps and um, one of the the girls that I am loving working with Danielle Ford L V uh, is I'm doing a a couple of courses with her I've done a couple of courses with her and um, but she had mentioned I should have had an affiliate link. Um, on the Himalayan salt lamp because she thought they were kind of kooky and after she saw my broadcast on it She wanted to buy one for every room. I have one in every room and um, so at any rate um you can go to my website the dancing soul you will see a tab that says amazing things I've got books. I've got you know different things that I love but the Himalayan salt lamps are on there So as for you too, Danielle for so you can get one for every room um, They're really really awesome. I totally love mine I have them on whenever I'm at home whenever I'm around especially if you have a lot of electronics because the electronics put off positive ions which create negative moods um, So that's it. I rambled a little bit more than what I had anticipated But I just wanted to get on here and just kind of share what a little bit of my inspiration was for my post yesterday and um, leave you with a couple of questions to ask yourself. All right. So thank you guys again for hanging out with me and uh, for a little bit of Wednesday wisdom, self-care wisdom for our soul. So until next time, ciao.